just fine fountain free free to all the
rescue others by snatching them from the flames of judgment, there are still others to whom you need to show mercy. But be careful that you aren't contaminated by their sins. Word of God today is entitled, You Can't Offer Enough to Get in Here. You can't offer enough to get in here. Now, we have all experienced past failures and have fallen short of the will of God. If you say you haven't, I stand here and call you a lie. All of us have fallen short of the glory of God. But I pose this question. If I ever stole something, am I forever not to be trusted because I like to steal again? If I at one time was undependable and lazy, Am I never again to be trusted with a job because I like to take shortcuts and show up late? Last one. If I was unfaithful in a relationship before, am I never to be trusted again? It is my opinion that my past does play a role in my tendencies, but if I completely submit to God's plan, of making me over again another, I can experience a lasting deliverance from the things that once had me bound. And my final observation is that our conscience serves as the gatekeeper to our soul. We can build walls or barriers all around ourselves, but we must be just as diligent to guard the integrity of our conscience yes, sir. or how we think. It's always a sad and disappointing thing to see someone become the very thing that they once despised. There were some during the women's suffrage movement who once they obtained their human rights to participate in the political process became willing and loyal practitioners of white supremacy. There are so-called Christians in America who are descendants of immigrants who now despise certain immigrants and want to now lock the doors to America. There are black men who despise racism and equality who now practice the same type of mistreatment and injustice towards black women. And some even use scripture to justify their sinful actions. All of these disgusting actions are due to a selfish, motivated change in the way that they think. Something came up. You got yours. And then became what you despise. Something selfish in you that, that once you got yours. Yes, sir. You didn't go to, to help others, right. but you became what you despised. Uh -huh. Verses 17 through 19, this is what the scripture says. But you, my dear friends, must remember what the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ told you. That in the last time, uh -huh. there would be scoffers whose purpose in life is to enjoy themselves in every evil way imaginable. Mm -hmm. Now they are here and they are the ones who are creating divisions among you. Yes, sir. They live by natural instinct because they do not have God's spirit living in them. Yeah. Here the writer says, you my dear friends must remember what the apostles said. It's important as we live this life that, that we remember what those who are providing leadership and shared wisdom, what they said to us. Uh -huh. It's important that we remember what 
we've been taught the good stuff that we've been taught. It's important to remember how we're supposed to live and behave. And he says, you, my dear friends, must remember what the apostles said to you. They told you that in the last days, scoffers whose purpose in life is to satisfy their own ungodly desires will be among you. Uh -huh. Now, there's a common term that we live by today that I really don't think is too smart to live by. The term says it's YOLO. You only live once. I don't know about that right there. I know you only die once. Uh -huh. uh, but I'm expecting to live again after this life is over. And so that the way I live my life, the way I treat people, I, I'm treating people trying to earn something after this life. If I look at it as if I only live once and then I, I'll look over those who are hungry among me. If I think you only live once and there's nothing after, I, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll step on those who are less fortunate than I am. But, but because I understand that, that, that life is bigger than what I'm living right now, that life is bigger than what I'm going through right now, that, that, that I, I'm trying to work towards somewhere, I, I treat those that are less fortunate, I, I treat them the way I want to be treated. And he says there are going to be scoffers among you that only care about what they want. You don't know you only live once. In the, in the, in the Urban Dictionary, it's in, in the Urban Dictionary defines it this way. You know the Urban Dictionary, just get back down to it. And the Urban Dictionary defines YOLO as an excuse to do something stupid. That's about it. An excuse to do something stupid. Not only did the apostles say there would be scoffers, but they also said that these people are the ones creating divisions among you. These are the ones that are creating the divisions that are among us. Yes, sir. They do what they want, and the Spirit of God, they say, is not in them, but they say, the Spirit of God ain't in them. Now, I think we got to look in deep and really identify these folk. <laughs> these folk that live how they want to live, do what they want to do. I think churches mislabel some folk. I think the church pointing the finger at some folk. And God got three fingers pointing back at the church. The folk that you are calling scoffers, they're not the ones that's creating the divisions among them. The ones that you label as those who are selfish and trying to do it their own way, I don't think those are the ones that God is talking about. Let me, let me keep working through this thing. Verses 20 and 21, this is what the scripture says. Uh -huh. But you, my dear friends, must continue to build your lives on the foundation of your holy faith and continue to pray as you are directed mm -hmm. by the Holy Spirit. Right. Yet in such a way that God's love can bless you as you wait for the eternal life that our Lord Jesus Christ in his mercy is going to give you. Says you, my dear friends, you, you must do three things to, to keep yourself safe in God's love. The three things that you, that you have to do because there's some folk that are out there that are trying to divide you. There's some folk that are out there that only care about themselves. There's, there's some folk out there that they, that they got everything to say about somebody else. We ain't got the slightest idea what well, their tax returns look like. There, there, there's some folk out there that got everything to say about somebody else. Always pointing the finger at this person, that person, that person, that person. That person. Yes, yes. But have not chosen to sweep around their own front door. He says you got to do three things to keep yourself safe in God's love. Number one, he says you got to build each other up in your most holy faith. That's our responsibility. To build each other up. I can only be as strong as, as you. I, I can only be as strong as the, the folk that are around me. And so 
and so my job is to, to build us up. And I, and I hold every time you see a Christian that's more interested in taking stuff from somebody. Come on, come on. I don't care about the Jesus that you say you know. You don't want to give folk their rights back to participate in, 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 in the basic human rights of our, of our citizenry. You, 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 and, and, then it's, and, then when, and then when through an election, we work hard and get it passed. And then you sit up in your offices in Tallahassee and you decide to take away what we through an election granted. Ain't nothing Christian about that. I don't care how big your church is. I don't care how who your pastor is. I don't care who your priest is. There's nothing godly about that. It says the first thing, one thing that we must do is to build each other up in our most holy faith. All right. All right. Brother, you messed up. You're trying to do right. You're trying to do better. What can I do to help you out? Right. Sister, you, you're trying your best. You, you, you made a mistake. What can I do to help you out? All right. All right. Just because somebody got a stick on their car to say they love Jesus. <laughs> Don't necessarily mean that they know Jesus. Yeah. Or just because they wear a cross around their back doesn't necessarily mean that Jesus knows them. Yeah. The way you know that they know Jesus is when you're down, they try to help you up. When you're trying to make it in life, when you're trying to do better, and, 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 and because we're, we, we are people of faith, we, we work together to help one another. That's how you identify. Say, so you'll know you by the works that you do. By the love that you share one for another. No, you don't tell us to go back to our asshole country and say, and then you want to claim Jesus. No, 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 that don't work that way. I don't know that that Christ that you're talking about. That's not the same one. I don't care. We might spell it the same, but it's not the same one. So the first thing that we must do is we must build each other up in our most holy faith. The second thing, we must pray in the power of the Holy Spirit. He said we have to pray the power of the Holy Spirit because the Bible tells us that we don't even know what to pray for. Uh, yeah, yeah, we, we think we know what folk need. We look at folk and we think that we know what they need, but 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 but, but what I think matters nothing. That I listen for the Holy Ghost and I allow the Holy Spirit to tell me what to pray for, how to pray for. I, I could be praying for something that God doesn't even want for your life. I, I, I think you need a new Mercedes. I, I think you need a uh, but God said no. The way they like settle right now, they don't need that right now. They don't need that debt. They don't need that load right now. Right now, pray for something just to get them from A, from a to B. He says, I got to listen to the Holy Spirit. And I got to pray, pray in the power of the Holy Ghost. And so the first thing that I do is I, we build each other up. That's how I make sure that I stay close to God. That's how I make sure I stay close to God's holy, that, that God's love. And then second, I pray in the power of the Holy Spirit. And then it says, but the last thing is that I wait on the mercy. That's what it says right there. I wait on the mercy that God is going to give us. You know what mercy is? Mercy is, I don't necessarily deserve it. I, I, I admit I messed up. But because of God's mercy, God's going to bless me anyhow. And, and can I tell you that God God has been good to me. God has been so merciful to me. I, that's why I can't get bigoted and think that I, I'm better than I really am. Uh, because I realize that, you know what, I, I might not have ever been in prison. Uh, but I can't sit here and say I ain't never done nothing that doesn't deserve me an opportunity to go to prison. I, I might not have ever been there. But I can't tell you I've never driven while drunk. I, I can't tell you that I've never smoked a marijuana when it was illegal. I, I can't tell you. But what I can tell you is that God had mercy on me. I 
You got to build each other up. You got to pray in the power of the Holy Spirit. And you got to wait on the mercy of Jesus Christ. And then finally, in verses 22 through 23, he says, show mercy to those whose faith is a wavering. He says, rescue others by snatching them from the flames of judgment. There are still others to whom you need to show mercy. But be careful that you aren't contaminated by their sins. Somebody sit here. Like most issues, we must be very careful when providing support and ministry. We must be careful to protect the integrity of our conscience and the way we think. He said we must show mercy to those whose faith is wavering. We got to show mercy. They're coming and they're trying their best. They might not be as strong as you right now, but they're trying their best. I thank God for everyone that shows up to church on Sunday morning. I thank God for everyone that shows up to Real Talk. I thank God for everyone that tries their best. God didn't call us to be perfect, but he called us to put forth our best effort. Somebody say yeah. Somebody say yeah. So we have to show mercy to those who are trying but fall down. When you fall down, that's not a gotcha moment for me. I got to pick you up and help you do better. Somebody say yeah. Not only must I show mercy, but we must rescue others by snatching them from the flames of judgment. Somebody say yeah. It's our job when somebody is in the pathway of destruction to snatch them from the flames of judgment. We don't sit by and wait for others for their downfall, but we snatch them from the flames of judgment because we love them so much. Somebody say yeah. But the critical piece that calls for us to support with caution is that while showing mercy for the sinner, we must maintain our hatred for the sin. I need to be real clear because this right here is where most folk mess up the whole understanding. People want to point out, well, because they do that, they're a sinner. And because they do that, they're a sinner. Marquita, can you do me a favor? In the verse that you showed during the service, I think it was Isaiah chapter 1. I think it was somewhere around verse 17, I believe. Go to 17 and let me see what it says. We want to find out, well, what does God define as a sinner? Well, let me break it down to you. The first thing God says, instead of trying to do all those commandments and confusing yourself, just do two. One, love the Lord that God with all the heart, mind, and soul. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like the two. It. Love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments, hang all the law and the prophet. I ain't got to worry about this law and that law, this sin and that sin. If I love my neighbor and I treat my neighbor right, I know I'm not in a world of sin. Well, let me see what 17 says. 17 says, learn to do good. Seek justice. Help the oppressed. Defend the orphan. Fight for the rights of widows. This is what God tells us to do. God says our responsibility is to do good to my neighbor and to God. Our responsibility is to seek justice. You don't sit by passively and watch folk being abused, oppressed, and stepped on and do nothing about it. But you seek justice. I attend meetings with folk all the time. Want to know? I see the racism all around. What can I do? You ain't got enough sense to know what you can do. What would you do if a dog was being kicked? What would you do if a gorilla was being abused? What would you do if somebody was messing over you? You would get up and stop it. He says, seek justice. Help the oppressed. Defend the orphan. Fight for the rights of the widows. And keep going in 18. He says, 
in life and unaborted. But I'm happy that scripture supports the notion that there's still power in the blood of Jesus. Somebody say yeah. Somebody say yeah. They say, Reverend Lawrence, you've been fighting racism and St. Augustine for your whole 12 years of being here. Do you ever get tired? Why would I get tired? There's power in the blood of Jesus. Somebody say yeah. Stick with Jesus, if I can love the oppressed, if I can stand up for the open, if I can speak up for the poor, I'm going to come through after a while. Somebody say that. Somebody say that. We got to understand that the scripture says that there's still power in the blood of Jesus. In chapter 1, verse 24 of the book of Jude, the scripture declares, now Why would I quit if God can keep me? Why would I give up if God can keep me? I've been to prison. I've missed some years. I'm behind right now. But I ain't no world. Ain't no way in the world that I'm throwing in the towel. I can still do all things through Christ Jesus. Because Jude chapter 1. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
Yeah.